Okay. Well, let's talk about, well, first of all, I wanted to talk about this contraption hanging down here. This is actually a planner that, a hanging planner that we got at Tractor Supply probably uh, a spring or two ago. I'm not exactly sure when, but when I first saw it in the store, I thought, ah, oh, that would make a wonderful hanging fruit basket. So that's what it is. So I, I forgot to take it down, so it's in the camera. <laughs> so, but what we're going to talk about now is one of the blessings uh, of having your own family milk cow is the abundance of milk. And one of the blessings of that especially since I own a Jersey, is the abundance of cream. And most people think about, when they think about cream, they think about making butter. Well, I'm going to pull off cream today. That's what this video is going to be about. And then we'll discuss some other things that you can do with the cream. There's two things specifically that I do that I'll be doing videos on in the real, in the, uh, I get tongue tied, in the rear, rear, <laughs> in the near future okay we got that all right so i wanted to show you here i actually marked the cream line right there on this one and on this one so you see that we've got this much is just pure cream and if you don't understand how this works let's talk about that for just a second uh you have when you when you buy milk in the grocery store you have pasteurized homogenized milk. Well pasteurization is where they heat it to a certain temperature to kill all the bacteria and and uh, good, in, well actually they kill the good and the bad in there okay so um, I call the store-bought milk a dead food because all the good stuff has been killed as well as the bad stuff. Um, but that's pasteurization where it's brought to a certain temperature and then it's held there for a certain length of time to, um, to kill all the bacteria in it. Now, with that said, uh, when you're, when you're uh, a dairy farmer and you're producing milk for the masses, that's by far the safest way to do it. But we drink our milk raw because I'm in total control of Lily's environment, her diet, and everything. And I'm, I am in contact with her twice a day, sometimes more. So I know that she's a healthy, clean cow. When milk is homogenized, what they do is they spin it, to the best of my understanding, they spin it and force it through very, a very tiny sieve, and it actually pulverizes that fat, but bursts it open, and the fat globules are made into much smaller particles and they stay suspended in the milk. So you don't have to shake it. We have to, I'm not gonna shake this because I'm about to pull the cream off, but before we drink, and I usually mark a jar with a D and that's drinking, it doesn't matter, just, just I just pick one um, and mark it with a D and we shake that before we pour it up in our cereal or use it in recipes or just drink it. It is just divine to drink. Well, this milk here straight from the cow, you see it's in its completely natural state. So it, the cream rises to the top. You've heard that uh, cliche, the cream rises to the top. Okay, so well that's where it comes from. The good stuff comes from the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pull this off. Uh, one quick note. I have read, I've read it, oh, excuse me, I've read it in several places that uh, busting up the fat globules exposes those to oxygen and they become oxidized. Well, you know, when we speak of health, we speak of antioxidants. So oxidants are not a good thing in our body. So that's another reason to try to source your milk as natural as possible. Um, this is probably not as big of a problem as some of the other overprocessed foods that we eat, so I wouldn't I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. But if you do have the dream of becoming self-reliant and self-sufficient, and maybe having that family milk cow in the near future or in the in the far future, whenever you're able, you'll see the benefits of it. You'll and and I want you to reap those benefits, and we're going to talk about those in these all these upcoming videos. Okay, so let's get to the process of pulling this cream off. Oh, one more thing. If you look, this says PM. I mark these when I pour them up, I date them and mark them morning or night. And, and one reason why I do that is just, of course, I want to keep up with the freshness of it. But also, the PM milk seems to have, that was my little Yorkie, <laughs> he's snoring over there. But the PM milk seems to have, um, not necessarily more cream, even though it does seem to. It's, it, 
it's a, a, a thicker cream. And I allow my, my milk to sit from 48 to 72 hours or even a little bit longer. If I get a little bit behind in my work, it's not a problem. As a general rule, it's kind of understood that your morning milk is going to have the heavier cream, but Lily's doesn't. Her heavier cream is at night. I don't know why, but we just know it. And so I tend to pull off my buttercream out of the nighttime. So I've taken um, an odd measuring cup that I had and I bent, bent the arm up on it. And now what you don't want to do is you don't want to dip your whatever apparatus you're using, whatever utensil you're using, you don't want to dip it deep down into here because you're gonna suck up the skim milk and we don't want that. Now, when I make butter, uh, I try to get as um, high percentage of just cream and not get any of that skim milk. But now when I p pull off for my coffee cream, um, a little bit of that doesn't hurt. So I'm going to show you, oh my goodness, this is rich and thick. And I'm going to show you. Look at that. Look at that. It is just beautiful. This makes this girl happy. I've got a little spatula here and I will scrape out as much as possible. And even on the outside, some, because I don't want it lost. I'm kind of stingy with my cream now. Usually that first dip is going to be your thickest. And you can watch the cream. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can, you can usually look and see if you, if you were right here. You could see that the, the cream will actually push down on the skim milk. I normally have a funnel on here, and I just forgot to put the funnel on here. But this is a wide mouth jar, so I think we can do it. But now, what I will do is I will actually put this back in the refrigerator. I'll fill this quart up, fill the jar up, and I will put it back in the refrigerator. And my butter churn, see that's getting a little bit thinner. It's not into the skim milk yet, but I think I'm going to put this in here. And then I will actually set this off to the side and I will pull uh, another uh, one or two little container fulls for my coffee cream. So we'll set this one off. I don't know if you can see it, but there's still that much cream in there, but it's gotten thin. So like I said, this is for butter. Now the date on this is the 8th, so it's about three days old. About four days old, actually. There was a little condensation in that one. Now, every now and then, I'll go to reach in, dip in, and the cream won't be thick. And I've, I kind of contribute that to the time of Lily's cycle. There seems to be a little bit of a difference when she's cycling. You see that when it's so thick that it just clings to the measuring cup. Oh, it just thrills me. And Lily is not bred back right now, and hopefully next month, January, we will be able to get her bred back. We put it off a little bit this time for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the reasons was she had had so many struggles. We wanted to get her good and healthy before we bred her back, because we wanted her strong to start growing that baby. And another reason is, um, her last calf was born in August, and we live in the Deep South, and August is just miserably hot. And the flies and bugs are just miserable, and that was one of the problems that we were fighting when her placenta was, uh, when she retained her placenta. Is between the heat and the bugs and the flies, it was just a recipe for disaster. So we're putting off the breeding a couple of months to get us over into September, October, where the weather will be a little bit more pleasant, hopefully. Now see, that is about all of that one, too, that I will take. So she's not bred back, and I will be, ooh, wrong one. I will be taking her to, we have a great little Jersey Dairy uh, in one of the towns close to us. And they do AI, that is artificial insemination. 
and I will try to catch her at the at the peak of her heat and they, they're so gracious if I can call them and anybody's there um, I can bring her and it takes me about a half an hour to get there and have her bred and we were very successful with this last calf doing that so um, it's hard to catch her heat sometimes because she's by herself she's a uh, we're a one cow operation so um, I have to kind of try to figure it out on my own. But I can usually tell um, there's a few signs that she, uh, her personality changes a little bit, not for the worst, just, just a little bit, and uh, a few other signs. And sometimes she will even uh, stand out in the pasture and she will just, what I call, she will just bawl. She just... She's just calling somebody, come visit me. And I think I actually put the wrong lid on there. No. Yeah, that's the dry lid. I want that from that. That one's got condensation on it. Okay, so out of three half gallons, you see we've got about a half a quart. So I'm, and that's just pulling off just the thick cream. So we'll do this one. Oh my goodness. And if you look, the eighth, the, the eighth was a tad bit thicker than the tenth. Just a little bit thicker. Still good cream. There's nothing wrong with it. It'll still make butter. But what we're going to do, some of the future videos now, I'm going to talk about, um, still going to do uh, several videos on owning a family milk cow, and we're going to cover feeding. What, what you should feed, what you shouldn't feed, what I feed and why I feed it. We're going to talk about uh, just some safety practices if you're not familiar with large animals and being around them or, or cows. Cows and horses are different. They're both large animals, but there's some personality traits that are different. Um, we're going to talk about uh, what to look for. We, we covered the physical traits. But we're going to talk about behavior traits that you want to look for when you go to purchase or go looking at that first cow. So that, that's going to be one of the other upcoming videos. Go ahead and cover that up because I want you to think, look, out of this uh, two gallons, I've got almost a quart of cream. I could, I could fudge a little and go ahead and finish filling this jar up. But um, we're going to cover, um, my goal is, is to take you from the dream of owning your own cow and if you have never owned a large animal or never uh, been around cows my goal is to to hopefully take you confidently through that walk to set you up for success it is a very rewarding task to take on um, it is a huge commitment uh, uh, right now we're milking twice a day and I'm the milker. Now we have a milking machine that we use in emergencies. My husband and my son can use those if I have to be out of town or if I'm sick or, or uh, something comes up and that uh, takes care of Lily. We have to milk her um, and we're going to take care of her, whatever it takes. So, um, but I'm, my goal is to walk you through the whole process from the dream to the reality. And sometimes the reality is tough. Um, there's days, there's mornings when it's really cold, uh, cold for here. Uh, but it's like my bones say, oh, we got to suit up and go out with coveralls and everything and, and jackets and all and, and get out there. But once I get out there and I sit down next to my warm, sweet cow, it's not a problem. Sometimes the effort to get out to the barn is the hardest part. Uh, but to take you from the dream to the reality and the rewards. If you dream of being more self-reliant and if you dream of learning those skills where you can take care of yourself and your family and in that dream is owning a family milk cow, 
then you have come to the right place because that's what we're going to be covering in the next several videos. And if you like what you see, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and don't forget that notification bell. And if this video brought you some joy, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And oh, please, I would be so blessed if you would share this video on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And don't forget the giveaway. When I reach a thousand subscribers, I've got a great book to give away. I talked about it in my welcome video, my very first video, and it's the Reader's Digest Back to Basics. I've got a couple of great copies. I'm not going to give you mine. I'm going to keep that one. But I've got two copies in really good condition, great condition, and I'm thinking I'm going to give them both away. I don't see why I shouldn't because I want to share this dream with others. So um, don't forget that. Uh, and also, I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. Your Heavenly Father loves you. And thank you for stopping by the cabin. And I'll see you on the next video.